is not fucking permanent. Yeah, the first episode's kind of boring. The second one's kind of boring, but after that, it's really good. It gets way better the longer it goes on. Like, the first couple episodes just have to set it up. But after that, it gets really fucking good. So let me see one second. Ugh. Fuck. Yeah, all shows take a while to get started. Sniper Wolf spotted, unfortunately, man. Unfucking fortunately. Oski Woski with the two. Yo, what's up, Archive fans? Let's start with gaming. Gotcha, man. Gaming. And Doom Boom with the two. Second thought, how capitalism ruined work. Yeah, I mean, we can watch it. We'll see how it goes. Um, Let's see. Let me copy that. All right, we're good. Let's move this. This episode is brought to you by Curiosity Stream. Get free access to Nebula, the streaming platform built by all your favorite YouTubers, when Bruh. you sign up for Curiosity Stream at the link below. If you're unemployed, it isn't because there's no work. There is, and always will be, work to be done. What we don't always have is jobs. Let's back up a little bit. In what? What type of retarded ass logic was that shit? Blitzkrieg boy with the two. Um, think you'll never play MCC again after new Halo. Yeah, I probably won't touch it. I'll probably just stick to Halo Infinite when it comes out. In this episode, we're looking at a uniquely capitalist failure, meaningless jobs and the unemployed masses. We'll unpack both of these phenomena. Meaningless jobs like um, child psychologists, um, literature specialists, um, what else? What are some other worthless jobs? <laughs> like, I mean, basically any liberal arts degree is a fucking waste and worthless job. And the different elements of a capitalist economy that shape our relationship to work. Every Why the fuck is he wearing a mask outside, bro? Every economic system to date has had its problems. Only under capitalism, however, has finding meaningful and useful work been an issue. What? Yeah, I'm pretty sure under fucking, what do you call it? Feudal Europe? You know, when you're literally a fucking peasant? I don't really think people consider that useful work, you know, slaving away in the fields all fucking day so that some lord or duke could be extremely fucking wealthy and they could barely pay their fucking taxes. DJ Aftershock with the two social work is another worthless field. Yeah, pretty true. It is a uniquely modern problem for an economy to be structured so that hundreds of thousands of people are without a meaningful job, and at the same time, hundreds of thousands have their most basic human needs going unmet. Our modern society is the only one in which people are both going without food and shelter, and it is actively disincentivized. How many people, all right, how many people have heard of homeless people dying of starvation? Has anyone ever heard of a homeless person dying of starvation? Because I sure as fuck haven't. This is such fucking bullshit, bro. Dude, like, there used to be people who literally would die of starvation every single year because there was a bad harvest. Or the winter was extremely harsh or something like that. Like, bro, we're living in a fucking golden age. Like, I don't know, man. This shit's so fucking stupid. 
Well, yeah, bro. Drugs kill everybody. It doesn't matter if you're fucking homeless or not. ...to organize things in a way that would help them. All of us can look around at our communities, our cities, our country, and see that there are things that need to be done. That there are issues we can all agree upon and want to see resolved. Yeah, those are some pretty ugly solar panels. Get rid of them. But we all... Is that the issue he was talking about? No, that there is only so... I'm just fucking around. ...so much we can do as individuals. Whether it's because we work long hours and need time to rest, because we're unemployed and need to actively look for a job, or because we're in a precarious situation ourselves, most of us have barely enough time and energy, if any at all, to feed the hungry, house the homeless, or generally better our lives and those of the people around us. Many of us work jobs that feel completely devoid of meaning, that seem to help no one, and we still can't spend our time in more meaningful ways because we too need a steady wage to keep a roof over our head and food on our table. We are trapped, and it seems... Yeah, dude, I'm really trapped by the fact that I have a good paying job that provides everything I need, you know? What a terrible situation to be stuck in. Oh my god. Nearly impossible to get out. In the midst of all this... Why the fuck would you want to get out of a job that pays for everything you need and then you have money left over? That sounds great. Finding a decent job has become incredibly difficult. No, it's not. There's literally a labor shortage. Long gone are the days of walking into a bank, asking to see the manager, and starting at a desk the same day. It yeah, because they actually make sure you're not some fucking random dude who just walked in on the street with a fake fucking resume, lied about everything they've ever done, and are literally a fucking felon. Yeah, that, that's more of a positive thing that you can't just walk into a fucking bank and get a job and start managing people's money. Like, the fuck? Are you dumb? Bro, I should add that shit to it. Like, the bozo, bitch, are you dumb, 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 shit. I may do that. Because honestly, this motherfucker's stupid. Sam the Madman with a two pseudo-intellectual YouTubers? Yeah. This shit is so dumb. And that's why it's Lewis with the two pretentious YouTuber tops useless careers. Indeed, man. Agreed. A content creator is one of the most useless careers on fucking planet Earth. 100%. Industrial jobs have steadily declined for decades, and even the relative security of a college education has waned as more graduates go into low-wage or even unpaid entry-level jobs. One, it's illegal to have a no-pay job. Like, even an internship has to be paid. It's illegal to not pay someone for an internship now. And second, you got the wrong fucking degree. End of story. If you wasted your money on some fucking dog shit degree, then that's your own fault. But if you have a good degree, you're going to get a good job. Simple as that. There is little hope that this generation will achieve the financial stability of our parents. And nah, I'm already better. And for those who entered the job market at the height of the pandemic particularly, employment has been lagging far behind expected levels. That is complete horseshit. We're literally in a labor shortage. You literally will get paid money to show up to an interview right now. God Howard with the two epoch wait epoch dare watch coach red yeah fuck no I've done that once I'm not repeating it that dude's a fucking moron. So how did we get here? Three different elements of capitalist society play into our current relationship with work: the profit motive, capitalism's purposeful misallocation of labor and the crises that are built into the system's proper function. Let's start with the profit motive. At the heart of our current crisis is the fact that the profit motive, the feature that capitalists have told us makes capitalism so efficient, does a terrible job at properly allocating for human needs. What? Bruh, since the beginning of fucking time, money has provided for human fucking- What the fuck is this dude talking about? Capitalists frame it like this. If you are incentivized to make profits, and the only way you can do that is by providing something that somebody else needs, a service or a product, self-interest will naturally transform into common good. Reality- Yeah. I mean, if you want to make money, then you're going to work hard at something, duh. Reality, however, turns out very differently. Not only can profit be generated in entirely speculative ways- 
Oh my god, bro. Is that don't benefit anybody, think cryptocurrency traders, but in just about every sector of the economy, the profit motive does more to pervert the common good. You do realize why there's a lot of money in crypto, right? Like, it's almost like this dude doesn't fucking realize that all the money that was, you know, made off of crypto came from people working actual fucking jobs in the first place to get that money to actually drive up the price of crypto, right? You do realize that, that you can't just make money on crypto if nobody else has money to put into it. Like, that's kind of the whole fucking point. Good, then enhance it. In the pursuit of higher profits, companies will destroy brand new items, purposely build flaws into their products so they'll become obsolete faster, or throw away perfectly good food. As a direct result of the profit motive, our planet is increasingly polluted and we live progressively more wasteful lives. Eh, I'm fine with that. But the market of goods isn't the only place capitalism's incentives don't work in our favor. When work enters into the equation, we see the same thing happen. The endless search for profits leads people at the very top of our society to make far more than they could ever need or spend. At oh, shut the fuck up. Dude, this is such jealousy. To they have more money than they could ever know what to do with. Oh my god, dude, that's not fair. Dude, you know what? Get your money, I'm not your funny. Quit bitching about it and go get your fucking billions, bro. Quit being a salty little bitch and go actually work hard. Like, I hate that fucking... No, no one needs more than $10 million. That's like, shut the fuck up. Who are you to tell me what I need? Like, this motherfucker is obviously jealous. And that's where this argument comes from. At the bottom, forms a vast chasm of... Because the second when these type of people get money, they don't, am they don't miraculously start giving it away. Like, this person, if he ever became a billionaire, I 100% guarantee you he would not give away all of his money except for $10 million or whatever. Like, even though he could never spend all of it, you know, he sure as fuck isn't going to give it to somebody else if given the opportunity. Like, that's the thing. I don't know. You know, motherfuckers like this cannot keep that same energy. One man show with the five of blame schools for not teaching people how to invest, use, and manage money. So you get people trying to live glamour lifestyles they can't afford. I mean, honestly, at this point, anyone actually expecting to learn anything from school is kind of playing themselves. Like, real learning does not come from a classroom. End of story. For Kenzie with the two, COVID was the best thing to happen for me job-wise. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of nice right now. I can just sit at home and do whatever as long as I get my work done. And you, Generation with the two, give me $2? All right, man, got you. Open wide. Of crushing poverty. And it all starts at hiring. In the hiring process, the profit motive consistently leads the managerial class to offer lower wages, worse benefits, longer hours, and more dangerous working conditions to potential employees so that they can be the tiniest bit more profitable and gain a sliver of an edge over the competition. I mean, why would you give someone more money for a job if you didn't have to? Like, bro, would you walk into a fucking grocery store and the milk's price $3, but you're going to give the people 5 bucks and say, oh... I don't care that it's only three bucks. You can have five. Like, the fuck? Why would you pay more for someone than what their job or role is worth? That's fucking stupid. You know, it's amazing, too, because it's almost like you can decline the job or counter the offer and say, well, I'm not really a big fan of the benefits. If you want me to come work here, up them. Or up my pay. Give me a better signing bonus. Like... You do realize you have the choice to work for a company or not, right? And you can negotiate your terms of employment, too. Like, these are pretty common concepts. Workers face a similar dilemma, offering to be paid the minimum they can afford if it means they can guarantee getting a salary over the next person. Thanks to the profit motive, it is in the interest of the company to hire the fewest people, give them the least amount of money, and work them as much as possible to extract every last penny the competition isn't extracting themselves. But at the same time, the profit motive leads companies to offer jobs that are increasingly meaningless, but very profitable to shareholders. We'll get to that in a second. How is a job meaningless if it's profitable? 
those two things do not add up. If you're actively making money for a company, how is that a meaningless job when literally the entire point of working at a company, the whole meaning of that position is to make the company money? The fuck are you talking about? But first, let's look at the flip side of the coin, unemployment. While the profit motive can explain part of the equation, our lack of jobs is explained by another feature of the capitalist economy. For a capitalist system to function, it is absolutely essential for some people to be unemployed. This is called the natural rate of un- That is completely fucking false. Completely fucking false. Sam the Madman with the two lottery winners prove you can spend that money? Yeah, most lottery winners go broke. Employment, and it is one of the foundational elements of our 21st century stage of capitalism. For companies to consistently push wages down in a capitalist economy, thereby increasing their profits, staying competitive, and retaining complete control over labor, two things must be guaranteed. One, there must be an available pool of desperate workers to pull from. There needs to be that segment of people experiencing not only unemployment and the heavy mental burden that comes with it, but also dire need so that an otherwise unappealing job gets filled. Hence the reason capitalists are so staunchly against sensible welfare provisions. So long as people are desperate enough, capitalists can cycle them in and out of jobs that barely allow them to maintain an acceptable standard of living. Yeah, whereas in the past, if you didn't want to do a job you didn't want to do, you'd literally fucking die. So, which one do you guys think is better? You may have to suck it up and go work at fucking McDonald's even though you don't really want to, or literally fucking starve, die, and your entire family perishes. Which one do you guys prefer? Like, just just a quick little poll of the audience here. Would you rather suck it up and work at McDonald's until you can find an actual good job, or would you rather literally die? Because that's the alternative here. It's like, <laughs> I don't, he's acting like, oh my God, I have to work for a living. Yeah, you do. You you do need to work. It's it's a crazy concept, but in the past, when you refused to work, you would literally die because you'd have no food. Now it's like, oh, you have to go on welfare, but you can still eat. You'll still survive. You just won't be living comfortably. Oh no. Lunder Studios with the five where I work, they give us a raise because they can't keep workers in. Yup. There's a literal labor shortage right now. And Sam the Madman with the two I find working at my local Zaxby's fun. Fair enough, man. Zaxby's is lit as fuck. Two, and intimately tied with the first point, firing workers must be as easy as possible. Having a mass of unemployed yeah, because if someone's doing a fucking bad job, it shouldn't be hard to get rid of them. ...ready to work people available helps, but so does knocking down the barriers put up by unionized labor and government regulations so the threat of unemployment becomes more tangible. Were this not the case, profits would not be maximized for the capitalist class and their version of efficiency, slowly pushing them out of the market in favor of their more... Yeah, because if people know they're never going to get fucking fired, you have people who end up doing as good of a job as fucking government employees. Which, I don't know if you guys are familiar with the um, whole thing with the government. It's like most people go to a government job because they know they can't get fired, even if they do a dog shit job. That's not really a great mentality to have if you're looking to hire people to, you know, run a competent company. Ruthless competitors. The quest to maximize profit therefore naturally pushes people into unemployment and artificially creates a scarcity of jobs. In other words, in order for the system to work properly, there must always be a reserve army of labor, a section of the population unemployed and actively worse off. In theory, economists estimate this to be around 5% of the workforce, a percentage of people who are unemployed but only for a short time. In reality, unemployment is maintained at a much higher rate and includes far more people in both longer term and more dire unemployment. Otherwise, hiring stops being quite so flexible and profitable for the owner class. This fact makes capitalism pretty unappealing. No society should only survive off the backs of underpaid workers and a steady flow of the desperately unemployed who face homelessness. Define underpaid. Because I'm sorry, bro. Mopping a floor is not exactly... <laughs> oh, 
fucking super complex job. Like, how much money do you think that's actually worth? Like, that's the thing I don't get, bro. It's like some of these jobs are not, like, underpaid for what... Like, this is the thing I love the most is teachers, okay? Bro, teachers love the bitch that they're underpaid, okay? These motherfuckers literally get three months off a year minimum, and they bitch that they're getting underpaid. It's like, no shit. You only work for three fucking fourths of the year. Like, bro, that is the perfect example of people who claim they're underpaid that are not. Like, these bitches literally do not work for a full three fucking months out of the year, minimum. And they act like they're underpaid. It's like, no, go get a job where you work all 12 months and you'll be paid the whatever amount you're owed or whatever bullshit you want to, you know, pull out of your ass. Like, bruh, teaching is not, is not like a, (laughs) they're acting like it's like the hardest job in the world. It's really not. Like, you literally get the textbook, you get all the teaching materials from the textbook company, you get the tests and quizzes from the textbook company, you get the homework assignments from the textbook company. Like, bruh. I don't know, man. How the fuck can you claim that you're underpaid when you're barely even working, like, the full year? You want to be a teacher? I mean, that's fine. But that's the thing is you know going into it, you're not going to get paid as much as other jobs because you're not working the full year. That's just the way it is, man. I don't know. I don't get that argument. It's like when you don't work a full year, of course you're not going to get paid as much as someone who does work a full year. Duh. Duh. Teaching isn't hard? No, everything's provided for you. Yeah, teachers get paid a lot compared to how many hours they actually work. But it doesn't end there. The profit motive and the overall organization of our economy pervert the notion of jobs entirely. Specifically, useful jobs are made unrewarding, while useless jobs become lucrative. This is David Graeber's thesis. Graeber was an anthropologist jobs become He's using a footage of doctors as a quote unquote useless job. Oh my god. DJ Aftershock with the two teachers get lofty pensions too. Yeah, they do get good pensions. And Lunar Studios with the two, I'm not making hundred K a month. Capitalism <laughs> failed, that's right. But even though you could never spend that much money anyway, so you really shouldn't be making $100,000 a month. But if I was making $100,000 a month, it'd be fine because then I could use that money to lecture you about how bad it is to make money. Come lucrative. This is David Graeber's thesis. Graeber was an anthropologist most well known for his 2018 book, Bullshit Jobs. In this book, Graeber observed something we all know to be true. Some jobs exist solely to make the rich more money and to keep us working. Oh god, I can't wait to hear these bullshit jobs. Contrary to what we've long been told, that as technology improves, automation will ease our work week to fewer and fewer hours so we can more completely enjoy our lives away from the necessary labor requ- What are the bullshit jobs? I'm kind of curious. ...required to maintain it. Our capitalist society has tightened its grip on exploitation for exploitation's sake. Instead of phasing out human labor as more and more jobs become obsolete, allowing us to reap the benefits of an advanced economy where humans don't need to perform all essential labor, the quest for profit has created new jobs that serve entirely to boost numbers on a computer screen, accumulate the wealth and power of a greedy few, and keep the masses locked into jobs that alienate us and exhaust us too much to fight for meaningful change. Despite a decline in farming and industry jobs, we produce enough to cover far more basic needs and general goods than we could ever require. So where did the jobs go? According to Graeber, jobs became meaningless. In a complete reversal of capitalist theory, where jobs should disappear as they become unnecessary, useless jobs have become a fixture of our modern economy. What is a useless job? Give us one example. We work for work's sake. The numbers are on Graeber's side. In a poll of the British workforce, a full 37... Oh my god. This does not mean a job is useless if someone says like, oh, I don't feel like I'm contributing to the world. 
Like, what the fuck is this type of bullshit? Name one job you think is useless. 7% of those surveyed felt- Why don't you just name the fucking jobs, bro? Felt their jobs like, honestly. And an additional 13% didn't know if their jobs made any meaningful contribution to the world. That Who fucking cares? That's 50% of jobs. Define a meaningful contribution to the world, because I guarantee you that definition greatly varies from person to person. Half of jobs are deemed by those who do them to be pointless. Paradoxically, these are often the white collar, highly valued, and most lucrative jobs that fall into this unfulfilling dead end. These are not the essential workers spotlighted by the pandemic, whom we all saw are foundational to our survival. It's not the minimum wage workers who work meaningless jobs. Instead, a capitalist system that pursues growth for growth's sake and drags us along, forcing countless workers into aimless employment with the threat of starvation, creates a landscape of pointless labor that serves only to- Name an example of pointless labor. God Howard with a two professional bed warmer. That's an actual job. Oh, shit. I should hire one of those. I love getting into a warm bed. To keep the machine running smoothly for the benefit of those at the controls. The masses work not for the common good, but to accrue financial capital for the disproportionately small ruling minority. If things were different, if we did cast off these pointless jobs that might as well not exist, our entire system would come undone. Homelessness, the 40-hour work week, minimum wage jobs, None of it would be justifiable if we eliminated our attachment to the profit motive, the delusion of infinite growth, and the ridiculous idea that we all need to put more than half our waking hours into a job regardless of its necessity. No one puts over half their waking hours into a fucking job. Oh my god, bruh. Dude, it's like eight hours out of the fucking 18 you're awake. Like the fuck? That's not even half. S.Y.S. Lewis with the two. Why everyone out here trying to feel important? We ain't. Facts, bro. Like, not every job is going to be like, oh, my God, dude, I'm literally changing the world, bro. Oh, my God. Like, duh. Somebody's got to scoop up the shit off of the floor. Someone has to change, like, an old person's fucking diaper in a nursing home. Like, not every job is going to feel like, oh, my God, this is the most impactful thing in the history of mankind. Like, it's really stupid to expect that. Like, get your fucking money, you know, and then spend your free time how you want. Get a job that provides for your basic human needs. S.Y.S. Lewis with the two. Why everyone out here trying to... Oh, wait, shit. I just fucking read that retard moment. So that we can simply pay for our miserable existence. At this point, we should acknowledge that there is currently a labor shortage in minimum wage, particularly restaurant jobs. Told you. Labor shortage, but it's impossible to find a job, right? Pyramid Head with the 37. This guy is talking about meaningless jobs while making YouTube videos sitting on his ass. Meanwhile, some people are on there or some people work their ass off to provide their families. This is just pitiful. Yeah, that's the other thing. Perfect example. How is a job meaningless if you're using that job to provide money to basically take care of your family? That's a pretty meaningful job if it's providing you the money to basically raise your family and provide for them. So... This whole fucking thing is just completely stupid. Lunder Studios are the fine, but Griffin, if he gives an example, it would <laughs> destroy his argument. Yeah, exactly. Because every single fucking quote-unquote useless job he's talking about is probably way more fucking useful than making YouTube videos. The reality of this situation, however, is not born out of any real shortage of people looking for a job, or the existence of too strong a social safety net, or a sudden lack of need for restaurants. People are realizing that when corporate lawyers make hundreds of thousands or millions of dollars... No, it's because people are getting $800 unemployment checks, and they're making just about as much money as they did working, so they'd rather just sit at home and take the fucking government check. It has nothing to do with working conditions or anything else. It's the fact that literally these stimulus checks are literally making it so nobody wants to fucking work. That's the only reality of the situation. And once those stimulus checks get cut off and nobody's making 800 bucks every week sitting on their fucking sitting at home on their ass, they're going to realize real quick, "Oh fuck. I actually have to work." So no. That's a very important detail to leave out in this video too, which I find very funny. 
Like he doesn't mention the fucking massive unemployment checks that people are getting from the government right now, which are not sustainable whatsoever and are going to go away very shortly. Yeah, I don't know how old this video is. I think it's kind of old. Oh no, it's new. What the fuck? They've been done for two months now? Yeah, and that's what I mean. People are going to start realizing like, oh shit. I got to go back to work. God Howard with the five, my previous job, you are and treated as worthless and was paid federal minimum wage and was hard work. I mean, yeah, but money is money, you know? I mean, that's the thing is like most people go to work expecting like, oh my God, I'm going to love it. It's like, no, you're just there to get paid. I don't know. There's a year protecting multi-billion dollar companies from the repercussions of their harmful cost cutting, offering the bare minimum poverty wage of $7.25 an hour, not providing benefits or flexibility for an appropriate work-life balance, or even a safe work environment for a necessary job is not going to get people lining up to work for you. Ultimately, the combination of a job market that actively pushes people into unemployment or meaningless jobs kicks wages down. Yeah, it's a paycheck at the end of the day, agreed. Down to the lowest possible rung and makes it unprofitable to provide for the needy despite our ability and desire to do so creates an infinite cycle of worsening conditions. A more thinly stretched economy justifies austerity measures for out of touch governments. I don't think they realize that when you raise the minimum wage, the only thing that happens is inflation occurs. Because when you raise the minimum wage, it means that more money is needed in the economy to not only just pay workers, but also because now people are producing more money, so therefore the average price level rises. And in all honesty, your real income doesn't change as a result. So like if you jacked up the minimum wage to $15, for example, or let's just say across the board you doubled everyone's pay, all right, everybody all of a sudden was getting paid two times as much money as they're making right now. What every single company would do on planet fucking Earth is double the price of everything they were already selling. Because now they know that everybody is making two times as much money as before. So literally, your real income value does not go up whatsoever. Because you're still only able to buy as much as you were before. But the number just looks bigger. I don't know, man. And God Howard with the two, the job was hard and paid bad, but it was fun as fuck. What was this job? What job was hard, paid bad, but was fun? I'm kind of curious. Was it working the corner or some shit? Lunder Studios with the two, you work for money, not pleasure? Yep. Get your money, I'm not your funny, oh man, you know? Get your money, I'm not your funny, up. I can't afford this shit! It continues to concentrate wealth at the top, and it makes it even easier for a greater degree of exploitation to be forced upon the working masses. Here we get to the final piece of the puzzle, the regular destabilization of capitalism. Every few years, in recent decades, about every five to ten years on average, the entire economy crashes and enters a recession or depression. Huge portions of the population lose their jobs, the banks are bailed out, and after much suffering, mostly by the poor, things return to a new normal within a couple of years. Now just a little bit more fragile and a little bit more unequal. These crises, like the inaccurate rating of subprime mortgages in 2008, or the start of the pandemic in 2020, far from being the unexpected product of random happenings across the world, are a structural feature of a capitalist economy. So, literally going into fucking lockdown is a function of capitalist... What? So people losing their jobs because everything fucking closes down for months is a result of capitalism? Yeah, I think that's more of government, you know, locking down and making it unable for businesses to actually... Like... This is fucking stupid. This is a pseudo-intellectual. Hyper with the five, guess my grocery job isn't impactful enough, despite buying my own shit and helping my mom in her time of need while saving money on top of that. Yeah, man, you're basically just another cog in the capitalist machine, bro. 
How could you? This <laughs> shit's so fucking stupid. And this is not a new idea. Non-capitalist economists anticipated the fragility of capitalism over a hundred years ago. As Marx observed, and has been proven... Oh my god, this dude is unironically quoting Karl fucking Marx. Dear god. This guy already has fucking brain damage. If you actually think anything that Karl Marx said is even remotely true, you are actually fucking brain dead. And right time and time again as economic crises occur and continue to multiply. Yeah, what greater economic crises has ever occurred than the fucking collapse of the fucking Soviet Union? Because that definitely wasn't a massive economic collapse or complete economic fucking shithole. Because, you know, socialism and communism has worked so fucking, way, so fucking well when it comes to the economy. You know, which, which um, economic structure literally starved tens of millions of people? I don't think it was capitalism. You know, I think it was the fucking retard energy coming from Marx. Sam the Madman with the two. This guy needs a real job. Good fucking luck, man. He sits on his ass making YouTube videos. It's hard to break away from that shit. DJ Aftershock with the two. Say what he is saying in a hipster stoner voice. Yeah, I think I'm good, man. And God Howard with the five. It was a government job where you exercised and got yelled at by guys with funny hats all day. But I didn't get past... The job training part due to medical reasons. Oh, shit. So it was a government job where you exercised and got yelled at. Interesting. Artie and Melnikov with the five reject capitalism, return to communism. I know, man. Like, this dude's unironically talking about economic issues when it comes to fucking capitalism, but is saying that socialism and Karl Marx was right about the economy? Oh, my fucking God. Capitalism has a natural tendency to fall into crises as a result. Capitalism has the natural tendency to fall into crises? Oh, dear fucking God. Dear God, bro. Capitalism falls into crises? Yeah, because Venezuela is doing great right now. The USSR was doing great right now. North Korea is doing fucking great right now. Most of China is doing absolutely fucking great right now. Dear God, man. These guys are fucking morons. Result of what he called the falling rate of profit. Because capitalism naturally creates monopolies and the concentration of wealth into fewer and fewer hands, the rate of returns on investments continually falls. Over time, this problem balloons until investing money is less and less useful, stagnating an economy that needs to grow endlessly to survive, inevitably crashing it and dragging countless millions of human beings into precarity. Long-term sustainability is sacrificed at the cost of a fragile but functioning economy, liable to collapse at any moment. And when it does, it isn't capital that suffers, it's labor. Regular people end up without a job and without a safety net. The point of this video is not that we should do what every president has promised since the beginning and create more jobs. As we've seen, more jobs don't always make things better if those jobs are- Yes, they do. If you have a paycheck coming in every single month versus not having one coming in, your life is already better. Pointless, alienating, dangerous, or demeaning. What we need is to- What jobs are even dangerous anymore, bro? Like, there's so many fucking safety regulations, it's almost impossible to find a dangerous job at this point. To better recognize the role jobs are meant to play and make them reflect that role more accurately. Jobs should not just be a way to make money, for ourselves or for the executives. Work, whether it's within the framework of a job or not, should be conducted with the express purpose of improving the human condition, at both the individual and societal level. This is clearly not what wage-based labor accomplishes. Think of how many different things we could achieve if we committed our labor to our needs. We could improve our infrastructure in long-sighted and sustainable ways, build up our green energy capacity, increase... You do realize that, you know, capitalism is the thing that builds all of this shit, right? That's where the money comes from, you know that, right? Without capitalism, the government wouldn't have any tax money. I mean, I just want to make that clear. ...the amount of available housing... Focus on our 
who's going to pay for that available housing if nobody's fucking working? If businesses aren't earning money? Who's going to pay for all that housing, bro? Our local agriculture. Make tangible, positive changes. These projects are rarely profitable, and that's why we don't see them today. Di yeah, because, you know, we kind of left the fucking Dark Ages about a thousand years ago. You know, most people don't really want to live the life of, Oh my god, man, I hope I can harvest enough wheat for the winter so my family doesn't fucking die. <laughs> you know, we kind of moved past that for a reason. Despite wage labor being at the center of a capitalist economy, it is neither natural nor eternal. And as we've seen, it makes people infinitely exploitable. It is not to be desired. Every socialist, at some point or another, has arrived or will arrive at this conclusion and argue that it is this unfair exchange, this contradiction, between those who hire and those who sell their labor that is at the core of our biggest society. I mean, this dude literally just unironically called himself a socialist, so we can probably confirm that he has something wrong with him. Like, seriously wrong with them. Like, an actual mental condition. Idle challenges. Seen through this lens, work is not simply an economic practice. It is a political act. As... <laughs> <laughs> Working is a political act? Oh my god. People who want... Jesus Christ. ...want a better future, whether you consider yourself socialist yet or not. It is... Socialist yet or not. You can suck my fucking cock, bro. Better dead than red, bitch. Therefore, our goal to politicize work in a more just way, whether that's through co-ops, unionization, or direct democratic control. Countless theories on work, compensation, and political economy. Bro, look at these fucking... Look at this shit. Bruh. This literally is the perfect picture of every single fucking wage protester on earth. An old white man, an old white woman wearing fucking sandals, bro. And matching sun hats. This is literally what I picture whenever I see a fucking labor rally. This right here. This is your typical of average protester. Sand the Madman with the two indeed a job at Zaxby's is a political act. That's right, man. <laughs> you fucking dirty capitalist pig. Me ...have been devised by socialist thinkers over the years. But at the end of the day, the vision of labor that most settle on looks something like this. Work is an essential facet of life. However, it is far from being what life is about. The purpose of human life is not to toil endlessly. Living can be so much more. It is a myriad of things, from enjoying or creating art or good food. To Do you guys remember that meme where it's like, yeah, sometimes when I just get sick of thinking about the capitalist bullshit in today's society, I just want to get on my board and skate. Like, bro, I forgot about that fucking meme. I don't know if I can find it, but that's literally what that shit just reminded me of. <laughs> like that fucking dog shit meme. To forming meaningful relationships or bettering oneself. Work only facilitates that. And while labor can and should include some of these pleasures, fundamentally, work is only how we guarantee our ability to experience life. Under our current system, work doesn't have this role. It serves to generate profit, and since there is no natural cap to- Yes, because you need profit to pay people. If your company is not making money, then you don't have money to pay people's salaries and wages. Like, no shit, the entire point of a company is to drive profits, because without profits, you can't pay for anything. You fucking moron. ...to how much profit is desirable, neither is there a cap to how much work is deemed necessary. We are made to work more and more. The truth is that we can achieve all the necessary and even luxurious outcomes of work with far fewer hours, far fewer years of our lives, and far better conditions. The only reason that we don't is that a profit-based economy simply does not function that way. In a world of prosperity, we have been made to endlessly toil for the benefit of tyrants, for people we will never meet, and often whose names we do not even know. In order to build the future we deserve, we must dismantle the system that abuses work, this most fundamental of human endeavors. That's right, dude. I'm a lispy YouTuber, and I'm telling you to dismantle the tyrants. 
overthrow the big businesses. We must rise up as workers. Like, bruh, this dude literally just sounds like the typical, like, 20-year-old fucking liberal arts major that still lives with his fucking parents and goes to a local community college. That literally is what this dude sounds like. I guarantee you he goes to fucking Starbucks, too. You know, supporting those capitalist tyrants. If you'd like to get a glimpse of what jobs could look like in the coming decades, I... This is not a job. This is what he thinks a job looks like, bro. Painting on fucking paper. I highly recommend you check out Work of the Future on Curiosity. What the fuck is this shit? This looks like capitalism to me, bro. Stream. It's a fascinating look at how technology can be used to help free humanity from menial labor and reinvigorate... In I mean, bro, I was talking about it earlier. We need the robot slave labor force. ...innovative and meaningful work. Curiosity Stream is an established streaming platform with a solid track record of caring about great education. Bro, you better not be advertising a capitalistic business here. What the fuck, bro? This is evil. Sand the Madman with the two meanwhile in China. Neo Thailand, bro. Dude, that's the thing is like the Chinese literally have 75% of their population in purposeful poverty. Like, only um, southeastern China is allowed to be wealthy. The rest of the country, they purposely keep poor, so they have cheap labor. Dark Descendant with the two, he's going to say sub to my Patreon asking for cash. I wonder if he does have one. Let's see. Mm, he does. Bro, this dude literally has a fucking Patreon, and he's sitting here bitching about capitalism. Oh, dear God, bro. He's got how many ways to give him money? One, two, three different ways to give this fucker money. What a fucking dumbass. And he has a fucking corporate sponsor. I don't know, man. Socialists are just fucking brain dead. Legitimately. I don't fucking know, dude. Ugh. All right. So who was it? This one. I can't afford this shit. New World is. This was the video. So last an assassin with a five. Wow, as a business owner, I give others products and the means by which to provide for their families. I can assure you I'm not a tyrant. I don't know, man. Hey, it's like Julius Caesar, bro. They called him a tyrant because he was right. So look at it that way. They called Caesar a tyrant because he was popular and was helping people out and made Rome a better place. And they were upset by it. So what did they do? Because they couldn't beat him? They stabbed him in the back like a bunch of fucking pussies. Basically socialism in the nutshell. Crazy Crack at 831 with the two. Make a video on him. Eh, I'm good. I don't really care that much. Is the new MMORPG from Amazon Studios, and it fucking sucks. It Yo, is this dude playing this shit on, like, a fucking Intel integrated graphics chip? Like, why the fuck does it look this bad? It is awful. Here's the caveat to that statement, though. I've only played the first 10 hours, and that's what I'm going to be talking about in this video. I think that's enough to say that this game is bad, because you're not going to make... 10 hours into an MMO is fucking nothing. Get to the rest of the end game. Like, you're just not. It is so bad and unfun that you are going to stop playing this. But before I... Why is this shit fucking flashing, bro? Why is his screen, like, fucking flashing? Is he using some dog shit recording software? Uncodified horror with the two. We found our first Griffin Economics video. Yeah. All I can say when it comes to my opinion on the economy, better dead than red. That's all I can say, bruh. Fuck communism. Fuck socialism. You know what? Get your money up, not your funny up. Talk about all this game's flaws. I want to give a warning to everyone that wants to buy this game. If you're running a 30 series graphics card, this game will burn out your graphics card. There eh, no it won't. Are people having their fucking graphics cards straight up be destroyed by this game. So before you...
Hasn't happened to me. You go in and you play this. Look what you can do to prevent this to your graphics card. Because the last thing that you want to do is have your graphics card be destroyed by the shitter video game, okay? Now, before I tell you all my criticism, listen, I like MMORPGs. I enjoy MMORPGs. I play. Uh huh. I played a lot of Star Wars and Knights of the Old Republic. I play a shit ton of Destiny. I Destiny is not a fucking MMO. I played fucking Wizard 101. All right, Wizard 101 was actually kind of lit. When I was a kid, I played Skyrim. I love this type of game. Skyrim is not a fucking MMO. Oh my god. I love this genre of game. I love these types of game. But this game just it just sucks. It sucks. Now it really doesn't suck. <laughs> Let's talk about what I hate about it. First off, it's a fucking walking simulator. Yeah, it's called New World because you're exploring a new world. Like, I shit you not. The footage that I'm showing you in the background is maybe an hour's worth of gameplay, two hours worth, and it's 95% just me walking to where I need to do my quests at. Then fast travel like everybody else. And then 5% of it is actually me doing the quest. There are teleport mechanics, fast travel mechanics. Oh, but I, I don't know how they work, so they're bad. But they are almost always on cooldown, and it's a very long cooldown. There is no cooldown for fast travel. Returning to the inn requires a cooldown, but fast traveling does not have a cooldown. So you're going to be walking everywhere most of the time. Some people, for some reason, fucking like this, but I don't. I really, really hate this because it's just like it wastes my time. I Then pick up more quests. So that as you're walking around the world, you have stuff to constantly do. This is pretty easily remedied if you just actually, I don't know, play the game. I really like the way that Destiny does this. because. Oh god, bro. We're going to compare Destiny to New World? Bro, these games are nothing alike. There is nothing similar about Destiny and fucking New World. Other than the fact that you connect to the internet. Oski Waski with a two. What is this man's idea of an MMO? I think he's confused, bro. He thinks fucking Destiny 2 is an MMO. Like, that's what he's comparing this game to right now. This shit's fucking wild. Because you could just fast travel to the location that you need to do your quest at. You get your quest done, and you could fast travel back to the person that you need to fucking turn it in. Because Destiny's a fucking linear shooter, it's not open world. When you're doing a strike, you walk in a fucking straight line. Oh my god, bro. Oh my god. For this for this game, you go, you do your quest, and you have to walk all the way back to the person who gave you the quest to Oh my god. Turn it in. And the thing is about quests in this game is that for some reason, I don't know if they're randomly generated or the person who fucking designed them is just inept. But basically, uh, you're going to get a quest, and it's going to fucking be on the other side of the map. No, it's fucking not. Quests are literally area-specific. If you played this game for more than five fucking hours, you would realize that. Literally, every single quest in this game is tagged with a particular area that it needs to be completed in. The fuck are you talking about? So you have to go all the way over there do the fucking quest, and then come all the way back and turn it in. And that's like a good hour's worth of fucking walking, dude. Like, real time. Now, the thing is, as well, these quests are boring. Is he really gonna say he loves Destiny 2 and he's gonna say these quests are boring? Bro, it's the same fucking shit. The same type of missions over and over again. Either you like repetitive gameplay mechanics, or you don't. They are fucking soulless and boring. The same criticisms have been levied against Destiny 2. My man, you might want to keep that same energy. Like, it's like, kill five rabbits, uh, kill three dudes in this specific area. And in my experience, I've had a couple quests that are just like straight up broken. One quest was like, go kill five turkeys, and I went to the spot and there was no fucking turkeys there. Another quest was like, go grab this item, but... Any quest that tells you to kill turkeys, like, the turkeys are literally marked. 
on like but a fucking world hold up. event randomly. This area up here, like this bar, if you're in an area with turkeys, it literally shows you where the fuck the turkeys are up top. So you're fucking stupid. He spawned right on top of it, and this world event was way too high level for me. So if I try to go grab that item, I get one shot by whatever boss was there. If then walk around it. Feels like all the RPG elements, like the quests and shit, was just was just an afterthought. Was not thought out properly. Now another pro. They're fucking side quests, bro. They're not meant to be like deep story driven, lore heavy events. You just do them to get quick XP and money. Problem with this game as a whole, though, is it feels soulless. It feels totally soulless. It what? Feels like it just copy and paste all the popular traits of MMOs, all the popular fucking stereotypes, and just shoved them into one game. There's, there's nothing unique about this game. I don't, I don't, I don't know how to explain it. It feels like if you play this game, when you play this game, it feels like every other MMO. By the way, I just like forgot to say this earlier. Wow, an MMO that feels like an MMO. Crazy, right? I fucking wrote an essay for one of my classes in college while walking to a quest destination. Oh my god, bro. Like, I actually wrote a full-ass essay. Yeah, that's gonna be a big fucking doubt. Big fucking doubt, bro. A thousand word essay for one of my classes while my character was walking to where the quest was at. Just so you have a concept of how long the fucking walks are. Yeah, dude, you're typing right now? Hell yeah. In this game. While in my... Dude, he does sound like fucking Walter Jr. What the fuck? Journeys, while in my long walks, I had a lot of time to think. And the thing that I was constantly thinking about is why am I playing this game? Why should I play this game? What is this game offering me that no other video game is offering me? And it's nothing. And the true reason that I'm even playing this game right now, and I haven't freaking uninstalled this because I can't refund it. That's it. It's, it's buyer's remorse. That's it. You know, these realizations also made me think, why the hell is this game doing so well on Twitch? Like, it. Oh, I won't lie. It's one of the reasons I bought this game. Like, I... I because it's fucking fun. I don't know, man. Saw a lot of videos about it, and also I saw on Twitch, I'm like, a lot of people are watching this. And it's been like this for the last five days since the game came out. So maybe the game is good. But no, that's not the case. It, it dawned on me, finally, that this game is doing well on Twitch, not because it's good, but because the people, the streamers who are playing it, are being paid to play it. On top of that, Twitch is fucking owned by by Amazon, the people who made this game. So that's why this game is doing so good on Twitch. Now, let's let's not make this video be just... You do realize that even if Amazon owns the fucking game, it's not going to do well on Twitch. Like, a perfect example here. Does anyone remember a game called Crucible? Does anyone remember a hero shooter by the name of Crucible? Does anyone remember that dog shit? How well did that game do on Twitch? How many people were watching that game on Twitch? I mean, it was doing so well that they literally unreleased the game. <laughs> but yeah, because Amazon owns Twitch, the game's automatically going to do so well, right? No. I mean, this is so fucking stupid all just hate let me tell you about the good things the thing that i think could be good in this game and uh, first off that's the pvp the pvp i probably is fun i saw a little bit of shroud play uh like some massive pvp game modes and that could be fun but the problem is you will mock these game modes at level 20 like maybe a day's worth of or two days worth of grinding to get to that level it does not take two days to get to level 20 i got to level 20 in one day by that time, you are going to hate this game. You're most I guarantee you, most players are not going to make it to that level. Like, no way. Because they're just, they're just going to hate it and they're going to quit. Combined with, like, the queue times to getting into servers, you're just not going to want to fucking play this game. PvP out in the world, like, you could just turn on PvP. If you're low level, you're going to get fucking slaughtered. No shit, bro.
It's PvP in an MMO. If you're a lower level than someone, you're going to get your fucking ass clapped. Welcome to a level-based combat system. Oh my god, dude. <laughs> like, if you're low level, you're going to get clapped by high-level people. And, and people are already toxic in the PvP in this game. I've run into, like, level 30s. Level 30 players. People who've been playing this game since it came out, like, a couple... Oh god, is he going to get fucking bullied now? Days ago. Level 30 players hiding in fucking bushes in areas where you could expect low-level PvP enabled players to be. They just hide in bushes <laughs> there, and they fucking pop out and go kill the shit out of the players. That's funny as shit. Just to, like, uh, to flex them. I don't know. But it's it's such a sh Nah, dude, it's called... We do a little trolling. It's called We Do a Little Trolling. I know, man. Toxicity in an MMO. Like, bro, has he never seen that episode of fucking South Park? Dear God, man. Shitty thing to do. I don't know how a community gets this toxic this fast. It's actually kind of absurd. <laughs> and listen, I like it when a game is toxic, but like... Then why the fuck are you bitching that it's toxic if you like when a game is toxic? Bruh, this is so fucking bad. Do that towards the end game, not here. Also, speaking of level, most activities that could be considered fun are, like, locked at the 20 level. So, like, these dungeons or whatever, if you want to get to them, you need to get to level 20. Then get to level 20. Until then... If you just play straight through the story to level 20, you'll get there very quickly. You need to fucking farm out these boring-ass quests. No, you just play the story missions and you'll get to level 20 very easily. It's it's the worst. So how could they fix some of these issues? Well, I think, first off, they need to implement a fast travel system, like a system... They have a fast travel system. ...somewhere, like, free, quick, easy, fast travels from anywhere in the map. I know, I know, that's gonna maybe... So you want to be able to fast travel to any point in the map. So literally, there's zero reason for this game to be open world. Right? Like, what the fuck are you talking? I don't... This is so fucking stupid, bro. Ruin a lot of the walking aspect, but fuck that shit, dude. Also, on top of that, add mounts so that your character moves faster. Having this big of a world, you need to fucking travel way faster than you actually do, okay? And then... Ooh, what a fucking scrub. Oski Waski with the two, can we please watch Young? Yeah, he makes me laugh. Which video? And Pot Hunter Vester with the five. Alec Baldwin update. There's three shots fired. What the fuck? I don't know, man. That shit's sus. And the third thing, I really don't know how to fix this, but the story is fucking boring. Add some soul to this game. I don't know. I, I don't know what to say. My man's level 14, and he's saying the story's boring. But he hasn't even fuck. Like it's barely even started. I can't <laughs> like, dude, you're not even a fourth of the way through the game yet, and you're saying the story is boring, bro. It's an MMO. It's not a fucking like award-winning novel. I don't know, man. Hey, okay, just for this is fucking soulless. So add add soul to this game. But yeah, guys, uh, that's basically it. Uh, if you're thinking about buying a new world. Uh, this game is only really for people that have literally infinite time on their hands and just... So basically, like, every MMO got it. ...like wasting their time walking around in a boring, empty world. Uh, if you're a normal person or normal gamer, do not fucking touch this game. It is not worth your money, okay? And, uh, but yeah, that's basically it. Thank you guys for watching this video, and um, have an amazing one for the day. Peace out. Yeah, what a great video, bro. Definitely not trying to get the eight minutes. That's for fucking sure. I have a full in-depth review. Oh, shit. Since my last New World... New World is meh. Since my last New World video, I have dropped at least 50 more hours into this game, and I've gotten to level 32. I'm at the point where I could see the rest of the game so i feel as though i could get
no, you're not at the point where you can see the rest of the game. A lot of the shit in this game is locked behind level 60. Give a more fair and honest review of the game than I did before. Now, the first question you guys probably have if you saw my other video is, why the hell did you play more of this game? You said you hated it. And honestly, I just didn't have anything else to play. Like, there was no other game that really interested me. And New World was just like, ah, I just paid 40 bucks for this. Let me l at least play it a little bit. I'll be honest. I didn't hate New World. Like, I didn't hate playing it. But at the same time, there wasn't anything that I loved that I was just, like, blown away by. The entire game was just, like, meh. It was meh, if I have to describe it in one word. So we break down this review into four parts. Questing, PvP, leveling, and PvE. Questing does not change throughout the whole game. It is as bad as it is from the beginning. It doesn't It doesn't get better. It it actually gets worse because to an extent, you, you get fed up with all the shit that you do. You still get quests on the other side of the map, even late game, and you have to walk all the way over there. Now, there is a fast travel system that takes Azoth, which are currency that you get from doing main quests, but it costs more Azoth to fast travel than you get from the main quests. Horseshit. Bro, I have like 3,000 of whatever that material is you need to fast travel. And every time you fast travel, it takes like 70. It is literally so fucking abundant, you will never run out of it. You never will run out of it. And Oski Waski with the two, either his New World video or GTA video, both are funny. All right, we can take a look. So over time, you're going to run out of your ass off. And also... No, you're not. Just play the game. You'll have plenty of it. So if you're farming as off, there's like a cap to it. So no matter how hard you farm, you're going to still have to run across the map. On top of that, the main quest t takes you to places that you've never been. So you're not going to have the fast travel spot unlocked. And uh, later in the game... Yeah, you have to actually go discover the fast travel location, bro. Crazy, right? You actually have to explore in a game called New World... The new areas you go to? Quests don't get better. There's still the same drivel where you have to go to one spot, kill three dudes, and come all the way back. It's it. So it's an MMO quest. Got it. It doesn't get better. Doing these quests just... Yeah, like, what you're looking for is the dungeon mechanics, which are later in the game. It has such a way of sapping your soul. Like... I can never. I'd rather farm trees in this game than go do the fucking main quest because that's just how bad it is, how unfun and uninteresting the quest is. And if you're looking for story, if you're interested in the story of this game, there is absolutely I none here. Like, shit. I've been playing this game for 67 hours and I have no fucking clue what's going on. Like, I crashed on this random island and there's magic. That's about as much as I know about the story of this game. The main quest isn't the only bad quest in the game. All the side quests and PvP quests are bad, maybe even worse. The side quests boil down to go over here, grab this item, and come back. It is somehow more soulless than the main story quest. Because at least the main story quest has some progression. You just go over here, you kill these three dudes, and you come back. Nothing to it. Now, even worse, somehow... So you generation with the two, is he complaining about exploring in an open world? I think he is, man. I think he really is complaining about exploring in an open world game. You know, maybe this just isn't the genre for him. How it gets worse is the PvP quests. So in this game, there's this territory control system where you have to do faction quests in a certain territory. And the more faction quests you do, PvP enabled, you get more rep in that area. And the more rep that you get... It, it defines the control of the area. So if a bunch of players are doing PvP quests, they are going to make the area have more control from their faction. And if they reach a certain amount of points, then a war is declared. And that's when they go and fight, and whoever wins that gets a territory. Now, these PvP quests that you do are fucking lame. They are the same three quests in every region. Every region has three quests. You do them. And then you just repeat them over and over again. That's the only way to get points. And if you're doing this with like a five stack, which by the way is the max amount of players, or five or six is the max amount of players you can have in your party. 
Uh, it's going to take forever. You have to do the same three quests like ten times in order to take over a territory. It's it's very soul sapping. It doesn't it does it's not fun. And most of the time, you're not going to have any p players show up to, like, defend their territory. Not in my experience, at least. And I've done a lot of PvP quests. Like, I ran into one group of... All right, this is just kind of boring. Let's do something else. This dude just keeps saying soul sapping over and fucking over again. Oh, what's this? Huge DFEH mistake may screw Activision Blizzard lawsuit and give company... Oh, shit. Uh-oh. There's been a bump in the road when it comes to Activision bad the lawsuit. That's almost tempting. You think we should watch the Activision, Bla or Activision bad one or nah? What do you guys think? Remember when I told you guys, like, how many months ago that this Activision Blizzard lawsuit's probably going to turn into fucking nothing? Well, here we go. So this sucks to say, but the DFEH lawsuit against Activision Blizzard recently took a major blow because the DFEH itself kind of screwed up. So... To take you back to all the developments leading up to this, recall that the DFEH is the organization that has issues. But dude, I thought this was like set in stone. This was like guaranteed to go through. You know, we had all these armchair lawyers telling us that Activision was basically done at this point. Like the smoking gun had been found. Like what happened, bro? Yong, you might want to keep that same energy. Issued that lawsuit against Activision Blizzard because of their culture of harassment and discrimination. All of that's been brought to the surface. Activision Blizzard has faced all kinds of backlash and they've been scrambling to save face. And one of the ways they're doing that is by destroying evidence. California's DFEH organization had to expand their lawsuit because, according to them, they were interfering with the investigation through the destruction of evidence. And here's another headline that basically says the same thing. State of California alleges Activision Blizzard HR shredded documents that could be important to the case. Now, beyond the DFEH, Activision Blizzard's also facing lawsuits from other organizations. The SEC is representing investors. And then there is the EEOC, the U.S. Equal Employment Opportunity Commission. This is a federal organization that's supposed to be looking out for employees. The DFEH is a state government organization, specifically from California. And back in September of 2021, there were talks taking place between Activision Blizzard and the EEOC. Bobby Cotton claiming that we're deeply committed to making Activision Blizzard one of the best, most inclusive places to work anywhere. There is absolutely no place anywhere in our... See, if I was Bobby after this entire thing, I'd just say, fuck you, California, we're leaving. In all honesty, I would just piece the fuck out of California at that point. I'd pull the company to a different fucking state. I can't afford this shit! And Oscar with the two, okay, Griffin, make me laugh, unleash the hell upon him. I'll do my best, man company for discrimination harassment and unequal treatment of any kind him having the audacity to utter those words is just completely laughable but they emphasize that the company is actively engaged in continued discussions with the eoc and has cooperated with the eoc's investigation now whatever talks they had whatever influence activision blizzard exerted certainly benefited them as the eoc decided to settle this for practically nothing for activision blizzard which proves that they didn't have a fucking case. If the federal government cannot find anything wrong that you did other than fining you $18 million, then there's nothing fucking here. I hate to tell you, but if that's all the money the federal government can give from you, and you're a company as big as Activision Blizzard, there ain't shit here to even deal with. As reported, This is a nothing by Callan Browning from New York Times soon after a federal agency accused Activision of sexual harassment and discrimination and sought a jury trial, the EOC. The company said it would settle for $18 million, which for Activision Blizzard, this multi-billion dollar company, it's basically pennies for them. $18 million that Activision Blizzard claims will be used to compensate and make amends to eligible claimants. Any amounts not used for claimants will be divided between charities and basically trying to make this all look like a very positive situation when at the end of the day, 
the leaders who let the culture of harassment and discrimination run rampant are facing zero consequences, zero accountability, and are not capitulating to employees' reasonable demands amidst protests and strikes and walkouts and the like. And it goes... Yeah, a hundred people went to the fucking protest, bro. I'm pretty sure a 5,000 plus person company doesn't give a fuck about, like, what less than what? 2% of their entire employee base thinks? Like, bruh. If 2% of your employees are like, we want this... Do you really think a company fucking cares? Nope. Pot had the best with the two. We can't let them keep getting away with this. Yeah, bro. That's like the Redditors literally right now. I don't fucking know, man. Yeah, the walkout was a complete fucking flop. A hundred people did it, and it was for like one hour. And that was it. It was without saying. Then they all went back to fucking work after the walkout. Like, that's how worthless it was. That Activision Blizzard was none too happy about it. The CWA, which is a union that is working with Activision Blizzard to try to bring about some form of accountability, they expressed their discontent by tweeting, $18 million is a slap in the face to workers considering Activision Blizzard is worth $72 billion and workers dealt with toxic working conditions for years. And they expressed that they hope that other organizations like the SEC and the DFEH will do the right thing when the EEOC is issuing what is essentially less than a slap on the wrist to Activision Blizzard despite their egregious negligence and complacency to the situation there. The tactics that the company has engaged in to actively try to bury this whole issue under the carpet by, for example, using coercive tactics, interrogating employees and encouraging them not to speak out while all of this is going on. Activision Blizzard has apparently been going out of their way to try to suppress employees to save face for the company and to try to put plugs on this issue that has proven to be a major leak for them. And when reached out by Kotaku about how employees are not happy with this settlement, Activision Blizzard responded with, we agreed on $18 million with the EEOC, who is expert in this area. Apparently not. If the EEOC thinks that charging... A oh, but you know who the expert is? Yong Yan Kotaku, bro. Not the federal fucking agency that can actually file charges against the company. You know, if Kotaku and Yong Ya yeah say that it wasn't worthy of it, then obviously that must be the case, man. You know, we're we're really dealing with a true expert here in labor settlements, right? Oski Oski with the two didn't Dreamcast guys say this walkout was going to be a big blow? Yeah. And it was like a hundred people for a fucking hour, and that was it. Pothead investor with the two, how does he know that? Yeah, exactly, bro. We have a true armchair executive here, or lawyer, whatever the fuck you want to call it. A multi-billion dollar corporation, $18 million, is going to make up for years and years and years of harassment, discrimination. I'll take 18 mil. Abuse, you name it then they clearly don't know what they're doing. And then they try to make some reassurances. The EOC will make independent assessments of each claim. There will be multiple communication channels and yada, yada, yada. But given the EOC's light castigation of a very serious issue, it's hard to trust this organization at this point that they'll actually do the right thing. Now, here's where things get complicated and messy. Recall that the DFEH was the one who kind of kick-started all of this, brought all of this to the surface with their lawsuit. Well, they're not happy with the EOC settlement and try to intervene because they believe that the EOC settlement could actually damage their lawsuit because it might actually allow Activision Blizzard to destroy evidence as part of that settlement. This is what Stephen Totilo reported. California. Like I said, if the federal government is unable to find anything on you, then what makes you think a fucking state agency is going to be able to find more? Like, I hate to tell you, the federal government has access to a lot more fucking resources than some random fucking office in California does. Sorry, that's the truth. Cope. California's DFEH, which previously objected to Riot's rushed settlement with female workers, planned to object to the Equal Employment Opportunity Commissions or the EEOC settlement proposal with Activision 
says it could harm the DFEH's case. And attached are some screenshots of the filing that go into specifics. But I'd like to take a look at this PC Gamer article instead that summarizes everything really well. The headline reads, Activision Blizzard lawsuits in chaos as federal agency accuses California's DFEH of ethics violations. That part we'll get to in a bit, but essentially the EEOC has rejected their objection because of some conflicts of interest that they discovered within the DFEH that might have... <laughs> so here we go, guys. So now it turns out that the people working in this DFEH in California actually are loaded with conflicts of interest, and now the federal government is going after them and not Activision Blizzard because they're violating ethics when it comes to investigating companies. So really, in this situation, this agency that's supposed to be investigating and going after Activision Blizzard are the ones doing something wrong, to the point where the federal government's actually lashing out at them in defense of Activision Blizzard. Like, you really fucking love to see it, man. Like I told you guys from the beginning, this would turn into a big fat fucking nothing. Activision may have to pay some piss poor little fine, and that's about it. The end. Royally screw this case. Now, when it comes to the DFEH's objections to the EOC settlement, here is a portion of their filing that reads, the proposed consent decree also contains provisions sanctioning the effective destruction and or tampering of evidence critical to the DFEH's case, such as personnel files and other documents referencing sexual harassment, retaliation, and discrimination. There's something about that EOC settlement that clears Activision Blizzard from being mandated to maintain evidence and the DFEH's case and lawsuit is in large part writing on all of this evidence that Activision Blizzard may now get rid of to try to hide their misdeeds from the organization that kind of started it all that's going hard about bringing them to some form of justice. As for how the DFEH screwed up, well, this is detailed in this portion of the article, which begins by noting that the EOC quickly responded with a memorandum of points opposing the DFEH's appeal and objection to their settlement. And the case that was made by the EOC is that the DFEH case has been led by two lawyers who previously worked for the EEOC. And while working for the EEOC, they investigated Activision Blizzard in relation to the claim that have led to the settlement, the settlement that they are now objecting to. And yep, that's an obvious conflict of interest. You can't work on something and they go work for the opposing side of that, especially in a legal battle. Yeah, nah. Nope, that's a conflict of interest right there. So basically what happened is, is they were working with the federal government. They didn't like the outcome of the federal government's decision, so they decided to go work with the state government to try and get the outcome they want while using the insider information from the federal government to help out the state basically try to contradict the federal government. So yeah, unlucky as fuck. There is merit to what the EOC is arguing here, how there is a conflict of interest, a breach of professional ethics, and a violation of Californian law on the conduct of attorneys. Here's how the EOC put it word for word, specifically two DFH attorneys who play leadership roles within the organization, previously served as EOC who helped to direct the EOC's investigation into commissioners charge whatever this string of numbers, against Activision Blizzard. These same attorneys then proceeded to represent the DFEH in connection with these intervention proceedings, which seek to oppose the consent decree that arose out of the very investigation they helped to direct while at the EOC. Unfortunately, the DFEH realized too late, and the EOC claims the following. After being informed of this conflict, the DFEH retained new counsel, but appears to have filed the present intervention motion just hours after this counsel was retained, strongly suggesting that the motion is a product of the prohibited representation. For this reason, the intervention motion should be disallowed, and the DFEH attorneys should be barred from providing work product to or advising new counsel in connection with these intervention proceedings. So basically, they rushed to replace the former EOC lawyers with new counsel that would hopefully prevent this conflict of interest, but it was just too late by then. And now the EOC has a case against the DFEH 
in this regard. And the EOC could use that as an excuse to, as they say right here, disallow the intervention motion on the part of the DFEH. Apparently, the EOC even tried to bring this up with those two former EOC lawyers in a phone call before the legal documents were filed. But as soon as this was brought up, the DFEH attorneys just straight up disconnected the call, which suggests that maybe they realized their mistake and were like, oh crap, we shouldn't be saying anything more. We need it. Or they disconnected the call to say we never heard it. To kind of regroup and find out what we're going to do about this. And using this situation as ammunition, the EOC is straight up declaring that the DFEH's entire legal department should be barred from taking this objection forward. Or as the EOC put it, there can be no claim that there was timely isolation of these lawyers from any participation in representing DFEH in connection with the intervention proceedings as would be necessary to show that timely screening took place. Thus, all DFEH attorneys were and should remain barred from representing DFEH in this matter. PC Gamer also provided their own summary, so the current DFEH appeal against the EOC settlement with Activision Blizzard should be thrown out. And if the D Oh my god, bro, look at this fucking sign. Oh my god. Nerf male privilege. Bruh. This dude is desperate to get fucking laid, and it's sad. Bro, you're not going to get any pussy. You're not going to get any pussy. I'm sorry, man. You're really out here trying, but it ain't going to happen, bruh. It ain't going to happen. The FEH wants to continue to object. Its new lawyer should not have access. Hey, man, in the words of DSP. That's not begging. That's advertisement. He's advertising that he's on the market, but... Nobody's responding to that fucking ad campaign. To it. So what this means is that the EOC settlement may go uncontested because of the DFEH's grave error on that front. And so Activision Blizzard may, as part of the, their settlement, be allowed to destroy evidence. The DFEH may not be able to do anything about that because their appeal is now moot. The gamer also consulted a lawyer to chime in on this, a Harvard-educated lawyer going by the name Andrew Torres, who said that if the facts are indeed as they appear, as the EOC has detailed, then the entire DFEH investigation may violate rule blah blah blah. In terms of the letter of the law, the EOC might be correct in their claims against the DFEH, and if the DFEH let those lawyers run the investigation of Activision without permission from the EOC, things are going to get very ugly. Another lawyer who chimed in is Richard Hoegg, who has a Twitter account and a YouTube channel and often talks publicly and chimes in about the various legal cases going on in the gaming realm. And on this development, he said this, this is a pretty massive thing and if true would call into question large portions of the DFEH process, certainly as against the EOC directly, it might even provide Activision with its own defense to the original suit. Stay tuned. I think PC... Oh, no, dude. It's almost like... It's almost like I saw this coming two to three months ago. Crazy, right? Gamer put it best, absolutely stunning that the DFEH appears to have unwittingly or no made such a basic legal error. No, it's really not that surprising because California pulls this type of bullshit all the fucking time. They literally put companies in court all the time because the state is bleeding money and they look for any opportunity to get unofficial tax dollars from California businesses. California is literally the most adverse state to business on planet fucking Earth. They literally do this all the fucking time. If you knew anything about California's dog shit legal system, you would know that a company gets sued every other fucking day. It doesn't matter. This happens all the fucking time. Anyone with half a fucking brain knew this lawsuit was going nowhere except towards an eventual settlement fine because that's all California's after in this situation. They just want some money because their state's almost fucking bankrupt. This is an error bad enough that Activision Blizzard might be able to get away with all of this. The DFEH lawsuit might amount to nothing because of this one mistake that might have a ripple effect. And Activision Blizzard can use the DFEH's error here as legal ammunition in their own legal battle. 
and this has just made the whole situation that much more complicated and that much harder to nail Activision Blizzard. Now, that's not to say that this means the whole case is lost. There are possibilities that the DFEH could find legal means to come back from this, but... Like what? What are the legal means, Yong? Inform us. This is a major blow, and this is going to come at the disappointment of especially employees who no doubt were hoping that the DFEH would be the one to lead the charge on holding Activision Blizzard executives and leaders accountable when the EOC couldn't with that meager $18 million settlement. This is not a sweeping victory for Activision Blizzard, as PC Gamer points out. The usual legal provisos apply. This is what one side claims. The court could surprise us all. The DFEH may well come back with an unexpected counter argument. But if an investigation is conducted and if what the EOC claims turns out to be true, that's going to make the DFEH's uphill climb in battling Activision Blizzard that much steeper. So this is the current situation. It'll be a matter of just waiting and seeing how this all plays out. Yeah, bro. Yong wants um, Activision Blizzard to lose in court because they sell loot boxes. Duh. He was hoping that the loot box bad company would get sued. While the DFEH tried to speed this along, unfortunately, according to Kotaku, presiding judge Dale S. Fisher issued an order denying the DFEH's ex parte motion. This so smoke show with the two. Want to turn a woman off? Show her a Yong Yeah video or show up on your date wearing a Yong Yeah shirt, bro. Although that may get her dripping wet, as in sweating because she's afraid she's going to get fucking kidnapped. And smoke show with the two, bro. He has a death stranding baby back there. Dude, he's got, like, a legitimate fucking arsenal of virginity back there, bruh. It's not even just a wall at this point. Motherfucker's got every single video game action figure that's released in the past fucking year. This means that it will have to wait the normal time seven days after meeting and conferring to file its intervention motion against the EOC, which is to say that this mess will continue to drag along for a while longer. So all we can do for now is wait and see what happens, how this is all legally resolved, whether the DFEH is in as much trouble as the EOC claims, but this is not looking good. The DFEH might have really royally screwed up on this one. We can only hope that not so much that it's a completely lost case. But until then, let me know in the comments below what your thoughts and opinions are on the latest developments surrounding Activision Blizzard. And, you know, if you have any... Oski Waski with the two, not the wall of virginity, the room of virginity. Dude, I just don't... I don't get the fucking action figure thing at all really I don't like I can kind of understand the wall of games if you just like really like to play physical games okay but like the fucking figures bro they just collect dust that's all they fucking do like you literally have to go out of your way to like fucking dust them and make sure they're not just coated in like a layer of nasty ass dust I don't know I don't really fucking get the point of them. Like, they just look like shit overall, too. Like, you have a bunch of mismatching figures from a bunch of different, like, random games. I don't know. Yo, hold up. Hold up. Bro. Oh my. Do you guys see this? Bro. Is that a fucking My Little Pony toy? What the fuck is that thing? It kind of looks like a fucking My Little Pony or whatever. What the fuck is that? Like, do you see what I'm talking about? Like, you have the eyes right here. The head. A hoof. A hoof. Bro. Is that My Little Fucking Pony, man? What the fuck, man? Hold up. Is it in a different video? So one rumor... Bro, it kind of looks like a fucking My Little Pony back there. Like, you can kind of see it. Like, there's the head. That's the neck. Then the body goes back this way. Drops down to a hoof. Goes to another hoof. Then there's another hoof. Comes back up to the neck. And the head, bruh, it looks like a fucking My Little Pony. What the hell? 
All right, that's kind of sus. Peaches with the two. What gets him excited? Activision getting sued. I know, man. What gets Yong Yeah waking up in the morning is loot box bad company getting sued. It's a robot? I don't know, man. That shit kind of looks like a fucking pony. It's a superhero? Ooh, That may be even worse. Buzz Lightyear? Nah, Buzz Lightyear looks too cool for that. It's a Sony pony, bruh. It's the fucking Pegasus Nation official figure. Oski Woski with the two zoom in enhanced. Jesus Christ is Jason Bourne. Dude, I remember that meme got like so bad. Didn't they cut that line from the movie? Didn't they remove that shit from the movie because it was getting memes so hard? Yawasagi Nellums with the two that's not my little pony. Yeah, I mean, it's not mine either. Pony Nation Unite, the Pegasus Nation Unite. How would Griffin know it's a pony? Sus and the oh shit, you may have a good point. Oh fuck. But it came back in the director's cut. Yeah, because I remember I went to go see the movie in theaters and I was waiting for that fucking one moment and it never came. I was like, oh, that's kind of that's kind of disappointing. I'd let Griffin stroke my little pony. Oh, nice, man. I like horses. Horses are really cool animals. Like if I ever get land one day, I'd love to have a pet horse. Like, they're so intelligent, too. It's cool. I don't know. Horses are pretty dope. In all honesty. I would love to have horses. I see Ben Shapiro recommendation, Griffin based. Well, this is an incognito tab, so... The recommendations are completely fucking random. Horse shits everywhere and kicks your teeth in. Bruh, why would a horse kick my fucking teeth in? Horses are really nice. You generate with the two an acre of land in West Virginia is one grand? That's pretty fucking good, man. Instead of buying two Pokemon cards tonight, I could have bought two acres of land. What the fuck? I need to get my priorities straight, guys. What the fuck, man? Horses are meh. Donkeys are real. Jeez, bro. Donkeys are fucking annoying. I don't know. If I want to get, like, a horse or something, I want I want to be able to ride it, you know? Like, that's the cool thing about horses is, like, you can literally ride those bitches at, like, high speed. I can't They're pretty cool. Shit. Like, you get a fucking thrill from riding a horse. Like, bro, when you're riding a horse and that thing starts fucking running, it feels awesome. I don't know. It's cool. Yeah, you feel like you're in Red Dead Redemption. I did. I went horseback riding in, like, Yellowstone when I was a kid. It was pretty sick, man. Like they went, we went up to like through the mountains and everything like these mountain trails. We walked through like the stream and our like little river or whatever. It was really awesome, bro. Like you went up to like the horse's like shoulders in water, but you were still sitting on the back. Like it was really awesome. I don't know. It was fun. Horseback riding is pretty dope. And it's like really cool too. Cause like the horse knows what you want it to do. Without you really having to tell it. Just by like small little cues. Like pulling the reins a certain way. Like the horse is like smart enough to know. Like oh he wants to go right. Oh he wants to go left. Like it's really cool. I don't know man. It's a really. It's a neat experience if you get the opportunity. Try riding a try riding a horse at some point. It's pretty fun. So Travis with the two. What part of the horse? Well it depends on what time of day. You know. During the day, it was the night. Or no, during the fuck. During the day, it was the bag. But during the night, it was something else. 
Oski Waski with the two, I'd be surprised if any motherfucker knew the names. Like, no cap. Wait, what do you mean? Names of what? Fuck. I'm getting lost, man. I'm getting lost. Body Pilot with the five, I would rather pay full price for a remake than slightly under full price for a remaster, which is a glorified shade upscaled. Yeah, fair enough. I agree, man. Are you referring to the GTA trilogy? In Peaches of the Two, the horse is going to ride you. Oh, shit. Say no more. Bro, like, it's really cool, though. Like, just from being on, like, a horse for a while, like, you actually get, like, a bond with the animal. Like, it knows almost what you're thinking. It's really weird. It's hard for me to describe, but it is pretty cool. The only part that sucks is when the horse wants to stop and eat or it drops a fat fucking shit and then doesn't want to move, so you have to smell it. Yeah, there is no horse cock like... Wait, there's no cock like horse cock because it sends my asshole into shock, right? We already watched the GTA video, but I think we'll watch this one. And then I may get off, but... It was like his Destiny 2 video, I'm pretty sure. I wish this was a joke, but it's not. Which one should we watch? The bungee or the apple one? Yeah, I remember that. Mr. Hands, bro. The guy who got fucked by a horse and then died. Good riddance. Bungie, Apple, fuck, dude, it's kind of mixed. It's mixed, bro. Alright, I'm seeing more Apple, I think. We may just do this both. This is absolutely insane, even for Apple. It... <laughs> <laughs> I can't. I thought people were joking when they told me this. Yo, what happened to his mic? Did he downgrade his mic? Because it sounds a lot worse. What happened to the sure? I really, really thought it was a joke. It's play the intro, please. Skip it up and that up. What happened to his mic, bro? This new mic sounds way worse. So, perfect time for a shameless plug. If you want to see a large man live stream almost on a daily basis, haven't live streamed the past couple days, been busy, check out my secondary channel, RTU Streams. There'll be a pinned comment and a link below in the description. It's another YouTube channel that I stream on. And people were telling me that the Apple was selling a cloth. And I thought they were joking. I, I really thought it was just people making fun of Apple and trolling me and they wanted me to look and try to react to Apple selling a microfiber cloth on live stream. So I was like, all right, I'll look into it. Or like, oh, ha ha ha, that's funny, that's a joke. It's not a joke, it's a real thing. Do not buy it. Now we know Apple actually had an October 18th event where they showed off really interesting things like the M1 Pro and the M1 Max processors. They also had new MacBooks. So that's all really, really interesting stuff. But in between all those exciting announcements, the real one that's really exciting for all the wrong reasons is the polishing cloth that they released. It is a microfiber polishing cloth. <laughs> it has an Apple insignia on it. You're so what? Who fucking care? Like, why is this an issue? Cloth. <laughs> What's wrong with this? Huh? It has an Apple insignia on it. You're looking at it right now. Here it is. It's a polishing cloth. Closer zoom in on the Apple logo. And it they now they have it folded to make sure you could see the Apple logo at a sexier angle. On the microfiber cloth you were just about to buy before taxes for $19. 
Who fucking cares? <laughs> it's like 20 bucks. Like, that ain't sh I don't fucking know, man. If it's a good microfiber cloth, it's 20 bucks. Who fucking cares? Did I just turn on captions? What the fuck? And uh, product information made with soft, not abrasive material. The polishing cloth cleans any Apple display, including nano texture glass, safely and effectively. And it's compatibility. They actually have, oh my God, I didn't even see this before. They have a list. They have a list of uh, things you could use a microfiber cloth on. And they've gone through iPhone models. It goes, yes, it'll it'll work with any iPhone. Yeah, I don't really think this is a big deal. For all the way back to the SE, if you use it on any iPhone before the original first generation SE, the cloth will make your phone disintegrate. It's a true story. You need to believe me right now. And I, I have a bird. That means the validity of my statements you should take way more seriously. So anything before the SE, your microfiber cloth from Apple may actually light the phone on fire. Ask him. He's a he's an expert. Okay. And then they go. <laughs> and then Am I in college counting pennies? No, at no point when I was in college was I ever counting pennies. But now I have like a full time job now. And they go through. I'm not in college roll the ipad models they really need to do this but oh i have glass on my it it's it's a microfiber cloth it's a microfiber cloth you want to oh look you want to use it on your nintendo switch which i live stream some switch games too i actually have a setup on my live stream channel to live stream some switch games another shameless plug for my rtu streams channel look yeah, I just don't think this is a big deal at all. Like, just don't fucking buy it for $20 if you don't want to buy it. If you do want to buy it, and you think it's fine for 20 bucks, then buy it. Like, I don't fucking oh know, Oh my dude. goodness, my screen. I mean, they're not making you buy it. Well, it's actually a little... I don't know, man. This, this to me is just like a nothing. Is spick and span. And if I want... This is a scam, then don't fucking buy it, bro. <laughs> like that same cloth that I just used. You can probably find microfiber cloths for way more than 20 bucks online somewhere. Crush your bad with the five. I used to work for Apple Care phone support. People ask questions that's so basic that people like wait. So basic that people like it seems obvious. That's why Apple lists them. Exactly, bro. Because Apple's customer base is a lot of elderly people, a lot of, like, soccer moms and shit who aren't, like, super familiar with technology. So, yeah. I think a lot of people underestimate just how uninformed the average person is when they're buying something. News on my Switch. Look at this. Look at it. Yeah, I will say, if Apple puts their M1 chip... And an iPhone, I'm probably going to get that over the next Samsung phone. Because Apple has been absolutely fucking killing it with their devices lately. Like, the new iPad is amazing, the new MacBook Pros are amazing, and... If they can put, like, that M1 technology into the fucking iPhone and make it that much better, like, I'm probably going to pick that shit up. Because, like, what... They put it into the iPad, so there's not really a reason why they couldn't put it into the iPhone, you know? Look at it. Look at it. Baka. It's clean. And you could get like a 50 pack of these <laughs> at like Home Depot for the same price that you could get the one cloth from Apple. And it'll do the same thing. I have cleaned phone screens with this i have cleaned televisions i have gently used this on my oled television travis of the two um i, I know tech but i like my tech. iphone because it's simple yeah i mean apple products just do what they're supposed to do and then that's fucking it like if you just want a cell phone for a cell phone then iphones are great you have all the smartphone capabilities 
And overall, it's a very simple, easy to use, and well produced product. I don't know, man. I don't blame you. Visions, it works fine. It works fine. For example, just to show you how ridiculous, and you could get better deals than what I found here on Amazon. This same cloth, you could actually get it in different, fun, exciting colors, as you're seeing here. You could get festive. Don't you get festive with your microfiber cloth. You could get a 12 pack. God Howard with a two fun fact people or wait fun fact zero people showed up at the WNBA parade lol Bruh, I, I honestly forgot the WNBA was even a fucking thing Here's a challenge someone name a WNBA team Pack of a 12 inch by 12 inch cloth, okay, you could get it for less than a dollar each 987 987 before taxes, it's not even 10 bucks. And you could get a dozen of these cloths that will do the same job, <laughs> the same job as the as apples. This will do the same job. Egg so, McMuffin with the two, what's your full-time job? Gaming. If this is the mo if not the most egregious example of a corporation using their name to price gouge people i mean look hey if you want do whatever you want with your money okay there are people that donate to me man i feel like i'm just doing a big infomercial for my live stream channel there are people that donate 50 dollars to me to see me shirtless for a half an hour and they enjoy it they enjoy it so look man it's a free like do what you want to with your money i have sent spent money on things that i know that they were not justified i i get it okay people want to see the mozzarella hairy man nips that to them is worth the money maybe having an apple cloth is worth the money to you but if you think it's going to do anything special no one thinks the apple cloth is doing anything special Apple themselves are not advertising this cloth to do anything special. It's simply a branded cloth that if you want to buy, you can. Otherwise, any other cloth will work perfectly fine. They're not making any claims or anything like that. They're literally just selling something. I don't fucking know, man. <laughs> like... I don't fucking know, dude. It's not like Apple's making these claims like, this is the only cloth approved to clean the iPhone screen. Like, they're not doing that shit. They're just saying, this is our official cloth. Yeah, this is a fucking big fat nothing. No, I would not use your t-shirt too. Yeah, be careful with what you wipe your phone screen off with, seriously, because I have I have a friend that like had sand or some shit on his, and he wiped it with this shirt because he was at the beach, and it fucking scraped his entire fucking screen. Now, that was a while ago, so maybe phone screens are a little more rigid now, but yeah, he had like sand on his shirt or something from the beach, like the wind blowing, and he was wiping it off with his shirt. And it, like, scraped the shit out of his screen. Like, little tiny micro scratches all over the fucking place. So, yeah, typically only use a um, microfiber cloth. But even then, you want to make sure it's clean. Rackenzie with the five old people so uninformed, it took two years in an expensive Roku to tell my mom that you needed internet to use Netflix on the TV and me to find a job. Shit, man. Two years to figure out that you need internet to use Netflix. Damn. That is quite some time. And Travis with the two, I spent $350 on PC case fans. Fuck the haters. Bro, facts. Buy whatever the fuck you want. Like, if a $20 Apple cloth makes you feel good about wiping your screen, fucking buy it. It's not. It is literally the same thing as this, but with an Apple logo on it. And it has a markup of probably like 6,000%. So in, there is nothing. You, your screen is not going to melt with any other cloth. Just as you go into that purchase, remember that you are just literally buying this, but Apple selling it with their logo on it. 
and you're spending like 6,000% more. I can't bring that home enough. But hey, if it makes you sleep at night, God bless. This is Richard Review Tech. Horses are satisfying. Horses are satisfying. The thing is sold out till February. Obviously, people want it. Like, that's the thing. I don't blame Apple for selling a product people want. That is fine. I am so absolutely tired of this with video games. The constant milking people dry as a business model is just really annoying, and it needs to change. I don't know. I wish I could get milk dry. I can't afford it. Guys, have you ever had the feeling, or have you ever wanted to just get milked dry? I don't know. I have. Uh, Sam the Madman with the two my family's full of tech and math whizzes can't relate. Damn, man. Some of us are not so fortunate. But yeah, I would say, like, I'd probably... The math whiz in my family, I would probably say overall. So, you know what? I can hold that flex, at least. And username with a two with computer case fans, it's Noctua or nothing... I don't know what the fuck those are, but I'll take your word for it. What's going to change it? Because people are willing to pony up the money, but it still pisses me off nonetheless. Skip, dip, flit up, let's get into it. Skip it up and that up. With its next-gen console compatibility, a 1000R curvature that provides better immersion and reduces your eye strain, a Quad HD FreeSync Premium 165Hz 1 millisecond response time VA panel, BenQ light tuner and black... What the fuck? Is there like a monitor ad in the beginning of the shit? Black equalizer technology, exceptional color vibrance, built-in 2.1 channel speakers powered by Travolo for audio immersion, and BenQ's HDRI with Visa HDR4000 certification, which offers realistic details and vivid HDR content. The BenQ EX3210R is an exceptional monitor for your PC or console gaming. Click the affiliate link in the description to find out more. So it's weird to think that Destiny 2 has been out for four years now. Yeah, September 2017. Let me look at my horse. Yes, September 2017. Destiny has been out for a long time. And it still has a very active community. And one of... Yeah, because it's fun. One of the ways that drives me insane that a lot of publishers are looking to make money on games now is additions and seasons and just trying to find a way to just yeah because instead of pushing out unnecessary sequels the companies are opting to just make money on the games that have already been released so instead of having to go out and buy a brand new game every other year you just pay 20 bucks or 30 bucks or whatever to get the new content for the next year or so keep people spending and spending and spending and what's funny to me is i'm kind of semi-ranting before i actually get into the meat and potatoes of the video then then gonna rant again is that they dare ask people to spend now 70 to 80 dollars on these games from the get-go and then ask them to spend more money to like continue these games it, it's it's unbelievable it, it, it it's absolutely incredible to me how much money publishers are looking to make per game now i know games cost a lot of money to make but this ain't it chief well anyway destiny the witch queen is arriving in february 2022 it's an expansion for uh destiny 2 and how they're trying to slice this up to make money is just ridiculous some of the dungeons are going to be behind paywalls unless you buy a certain edition and it's an absolute mess this comes from kotaku.com i'm going to read it to you then we'll discuss we knew back when bungie revealed the witch queen over the summer that the next big chapter in destiny 2 would bring new god howard with the two then why does cod release a new game every year because they don't do content updates like, they don't have season passes anymore, so all you pay for is basically the game, and then that's it. You don't really get any new content anymore. Like, no more map packs or anything like that. Just cosmetic shit. Then it's time for the next one. I don't know, man. 
I think it'd be dope if COD just released one game and then it got updated every year. It'd be kind of cool, but it wouldn't really work because they have different themes for all the games, so it'd kind of be conflicting. Gear, a new story campaign, the throne world destination, a raid, and dungeons. Just how exactly it would all be sliced up and rolled out across the paid expansion and seasonal. You generation with the two, I can't wait for Galahorn. Same here, man. When that shit drops, I'm 100% getting back on Destiny 2. I need to try that shit out, man. I'm feeling gala horny. Passes, though, was confusing. Adding to the mess was the fact that Bungie was also launching a paid 30th anniversary bundle that would include its own exclusive new gear and dungeon. This week, community manager Cosmo took to the Destiny subreddit to try and clarify what players would need to buy in order to access the various pieces of content. If you get the digital deluxe edition of The Witch Queen, you will receive the expansion, all four seasons for the next year, and the two dungeons he wrote. If you get the standard edition, you can still upgrade to the deluxe edition to get the dungeons later. We will also be offering a separate way for you to purchase the dungeons in the future, but they will not be included in the season passes. Okay, so here is how the pricing of Destiny 2 The Witch Queen breaks down. I just went all over to double check this. So the standard edition of Destiny 2 The Witch Queen is 40 bucks. The deluxe edition is going to be priced at 80 bucks. The Bungie 30th anniversary bundle is going to be 25 bucks. Or if you want to buy everything, it's going to be 100 bucks, which basically puts the I think I bought the 100 buck version. I'm pretty sure. I think I already have this pre-ordered. The full fat version of the Witch Queen for Destiny 2. Actually, let's check. Um Let's see. Um, Witch Queen Deluxe Edition, Witch Queen Pre-Order, Witch Queen Deluxe plus Bungie. Yeah, I think I have the $100 version. Yup, pretty sure. Oh no, man! I'm excited for that 30th anniversary pack, bro. I want G Horn back badly. At the same price that people paid for, De like, bro, Destiny 2 has zero like exotic rocket launchers. I feel like. I think they have Truth actually, but aside from that, there's like nothing. Destiny 2 back in 2017, if they bought it with the two DLC expansions, which were Curse of Osiris. Bro, I remember, like, you used to get legitimately discriminated against if you didn't have Galahorn in Destiny 1. Like, nobody would want to fucking play with you unless you had, like, Galahorn. Otherwise, you were basically, like, an untouchable. No one wanted to fucking talk to you. ...and Warmind. So, what they're doing here, I understand you're getting a lot of content, and it's not like... It's almost like you're getting another game... But they're making you rebuy the game again, in a sense. I understand it's different content, but they're making you rebuy the game again. And if you don't buy the full fat version of this expansion to access dungeons, they're probably in the future going to make you pay a la carte. Oh, I am so tired of games being treated like TV shows. I, I get there's a lot of money there. I know Activision makes a ton of money on microtransactions. I've talked about all this before, but this is... What bothers me is this with companies, not just Bungie, but there's countless other companies that they, they decry, oh, we need to make these games with the next gen consoles and how powerful they are. We need to make these games 70 and 80 and dollars or a hundred dollars, or we have to make you to take, take out a second loan or take out money from your or home equity loan on your mortgage just to buy all the expansions and DLCs for these games. How do you ask for all that and then have the audacity when you are making a killing with microtransactions and paid DLC and everything else, you have the audacity to say that the base price of games has to rise up, has to increase. Sorry, wrong terminology. How? Nah, the only thing that needs to rise up is gamers, bro. Gaming. <laughs> Dare you have the audacity to say that. It, it's just like they can't get enough it's like 
once they keep going, man, once they get one cookie out of the cookie jar, they want more cookies, and they just keep going, and then they get man boobs, and then they look like me. They look like me. Couldn't keep your hand out of the cookie jar, could you? Look, I have, if there wasn't the world of continual revenue coming from games like this and Call of Duty and things like that, if they gave a good, solid 30-hour plus single-player experience, or hell, it could even be significantly shorter than that. I'm about quality, not about quantity. I'd rather have a 15-hour game that's paced perfectly than that same game be fluffed up to 30 hours and, uh, like, 90% of that extra 15 hours feel like an absolute chore. And if that 15 hours was an insanely incredible experience, if it, if it costs them a lot of money to develop it, I'm willing to spend that $70. But if it stops there, if it stops there, or hey, if you want to have like two paid. So Crazy Crack at 831 with the fun, the RNG and Destiny 1 hated me. Played the entire campaign, House of Wolves, and a little bit of Dark Below. Never got above a blue item. Bro, that's madcap because you used to get fucking legendary rewards. Just from doing the campaign. You even got exotics, I'm pretty sure, from doing the campaign. Bro, that's major cap. Major cap. Oski Woski with the two of my fellow gamers who must rise up and fight gaming. That's right, man. We gotta fight for what's right, man. Gaming. Yeah! DLCs, and it stops there. But when it's just this continual, here's a new season, we're going to milk you dry for this, or we're going to try to incentivize younger people to get skins for their characters in Warzone, it's just like, oh my God, stop. Jesus Christ. I have no, look man, I love new games and I love new technology. I just bought the Crisis Trilogy for Switch, which I'm gonna probably st live stream on my secondary live stream channel, RTU Streams, link below in the description, top pin comment, shameless plug, mwah. So I have no issue supporting the industry and giving the industry money. I, I didn't get review codes for those, I paid for them. I should have probably mentioned that, but that's, so that's my point. But this is just insane. It, 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 I just, it, are games all going to become a service? I kind of know the answer to that, and it's inevitable, and it sucks. But that's not the route I want to go. And when I see stuff like this, and I can under, look, I'm not a big Destiny 2 guy, but I can understand it's, not only is it expensive, it's kind of confusing. So it's like, wait, so if I buy... It's not really expensive, though. Because $100 gives you everything for the next year. And that's it. Once you pay that 100 bucks, that's it. You don't have to pay for season passes. You don't have to pay for DLC. Like, you get fucking everything. And the people who play Destiny, like, you put a shit ton of time into that game. So $100 for the amount of time you put into Destiny really is not that much money. At all. I mean, bro, I spent 70 bucks on fucking Ratchet and Clank and spent five miserable hours, like, wanting to fucking die. But, I don't know, man. I, can't I think shit. Destiny is a much better use of money. So, Shushi with the 2 EA Dice Defended Specialist? I mean, I don't really care about the specialist shit, to be honest. I didn't even really pay attention to it. I personally like that you can use any weapon on any class, and you can kind of pick whatever abilities you want. But, hey, that's just me. I don't know. I wasn't really bothered by that. And Pyramid Head with the 18, this stream is great, lol. You popped up in my recommended, and I just clicked on your stream out of curiosity. Take my sub. I appreciate it, man. Thanks so much. Really appreciate it, bro. I can't afford this shit! I, this, this bundle, I get... Don't get the dungeons, but I could probably pay for the dungeons later, but you're kind of not sure how I'm going to pay for the dungeons. And oh my God, just let me give you money without confusing the hell out of me. Okay, just pay a hundred bucks. You'll get everything. But this is where we're at with gaming right now. And then that same industry, again, I blame the publishers, not the guys who are hard at work developing these games, have the audacity to turn around and say that they're not making enough money and they have to raise the base price when they no one is basically buying games like Destiny 2 at the base price anymore. It's an absolute joke, and it just makes me infuriated.
This is Rich of Review Tech USA signing out. Have a good one. Yeah, again, I don't really think this is a big issue at all either. Both of those videos were kind of just, eh, whatever. But I think I'm going to call it for tonight, guys. It's four for me. We've been live for five hours. I think I'm going to head to bed. Thanks, everybody, for stopping by. It has been fun, as usual. Big ups to everybody in the chat. Really appreciate all the support tonight. And I guess I'll try to stream tomorrow as well. We shall see. I may have plans, but I'll probably still come on, at least for a couple hours if... If I have time, so I guess I will see you all tomorrow night. Hope you all sleep well or have a good morning whenever you're watching this shit, and I'll talk to you all later. Peace out.